Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of a little lion tail macaque in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy seeing this come together here. I will be releasing this full-length real-time series over on my Patreon channel if you'd like to learn and paint along with me. And of course if you enjoy this here then please do hit subscribe. So like with all of my time-lapse videos, I do like to give you a little bit of information with my narration so that you can at least get something from the time-lapses. They're nice because they give you a quick overview, but I am aware that they're not always the best type of video to learn from. But hopefully throughout my time-lapses you will gain a little bit of extra knowledge, perhaps from my narration. So in this one I'm working on pastel matte paper. It's actually the board version of pastel mat, so it also comes as a nice firm mounted board. And this is a lovely warm yellow colour. I decided to use this lighter yellow tone for this. As you can see quite a lot of that paper colour coming through in the lighter parts of the macaque's fur. So it seemed like a good choice, something that was going to keep the overall effect nice and warm and glowing. But as always, I make a start with the background. Now I decided to change the background in the photo reference and I've got tons of other photos of these out of focus or bokeh backgrounds. So quite often I will purposefully take photos that are out of focus just to give me lots of reference and ideas and inspiration for this type of background. And over on my Patreon channel, I also share some photo packs like this so that you can make use of all of my nice atmospheric background reference. And there will be a whole part in this series dedicated just to the background in this one. I love creating these out of focus, almost dreamy backgrounds. They allow you to not go into anything too detailed. Um, they also allow you to introduce some colour in the background and a bit of pattern, a bit of interest. So I really do like to create these out of focus backgrounds in my work. And I have lots of tutorials about different types of background like this over on my tutorials library on my website emmacolbertart.com. So I really am a fan of painting backgrounds, whether they're really detailed and realistic or slightly more abstract. And for me, these are always really fun to create. Lots of finger painting here, using my fingers to blend and move the pigment on the paper. So once I get the background in, you can see that I've allowed that background colour to come right in over the edges of my outline of the macaque. So that when I add all of these little fine hairs out around the edges of the face, we'll get little bits of background shining through. So that's just why I do the background first. Most of the time, especially if I'm painting something furry, I really want the background to show through all of those soft edges of the main subject. So I'm using lots of the colours that I've already picked up for the background. Always trying to introduce some colour harmony into my work. And that's especially important if you're mixing and matching photo references because what you don't want is for the background to look completely disjointed from the main subject. So always remember, if the lighting is shining on the background, then it's shining on your main subject too. And you've got to use some common colours in both to tie the whole effect together. And I really like to push that to its limit, so I really like to try and use almost all of the colours that I've used in a background in the main subject somewhere.
So this is the second type of macaque that I've painted recently. I seem to be on a little roll of macaques or monkeys at the minute. And I've taken a lot of photo reference which has inspired these paintings. And of course when I release a series like this, a tutorial series that is, on my Patreon channel, I'll release the high resolution reference image as well so that my patrons can work along with me. But usually I've got extra photos that I'm not using as well. So I've got lots of extra photos of this little lion tail macaque. And so on Patreon, I will release those extra photos royalty free. So you can make use of the tutorial but make use of some of the royalty-free images, which will be quite similar, but slightly different poses, etc. And I think part of the reason why I'm a little obsessed with monkeys and macaques at the minute, well, just look at the expression. In each one that I've painted so far, they've had such a thoughtful expression, and that's really drawn me in. I really enjoy painting all sorts of animals, but it's only recently that I've tried my hand at a couple of monkeys. But I've really enjoyed studying them, I've really enjoyed looking at their little faces. And this one in particular, I really just thought her expression was quite sad. And extremely thoughtful. So they really make for an interesting subject matter. So lots and lots of layers going into the fur. I'm using mostly Unison Soft Pastels. I've got a few Terry Ludwigs thrown in as well. And then you, you can see that I'm picking up quite a lot of pastel pencil too. And it just depends on the nature of the subject, really, whether I'll use much pastel pencil or not. But in this one, because of the fineness of the hairs and how each hair on the monkey tends to have like a slight quiver to it. So it's not a straight hair. It looks like it's been crimped slightly in the 80s. And to get that effect on the top layer, a lot of the time I am turning to the pastel pencils where I can really control the type of mark that I make. But a lot of these lower layers being blocked in with my soft pastel sticks, using the strength of the pigment from the bigger sticks to lay down the main colours. And even creating quite a lot of the finer hairs as well, like you can see here. So this was certainly a hairy challenge. So much hair going in all different directions. But that was also why I chose to paint this. I really fancied having a go at all of that wild looking hair. So if you're interested in painting animals in particular, I've got lots and lots of tutorials of all sorts of different species, both domesticated and wild. I'll add links in the description below if you'd like to have a browse through my tutorials library on my website. I'm especially enjoying padding out the wildlife category in my tutorials library at the moment. I've spent most of this year already painting lots of wildlife reference that I've taken in the past. 
Taking on less commissions myself at the moment has meant that I can focus a little more on not only making tutorials, but painting some ideas that I've had in the bank for ages. And sometimes when you're really busy with commissions, it's hard to find that extra time to plan in your own personal pieces. And in my case, that that's turning out to be quite a lot of wildlife, which I love. And of course, there's the extra time in going to photograph. I like to work predominantly from my own photo reference. So it always takes a little extra planning and time to gather photo reference too. But this is also a part of the process that I really enjoy. And it's also nice to be able to provide all of my patrons with some extra photo reference because I'm aware that not everyone has the opportunity to go and photograph wild animals. And I really like to be able to share some of those extra shots that I take because when I go to photograph, I come home with hundreds of photographs. And no matter how hard I work, I will never ever paint them all. So I really like sharing some of those shots and seeing what some of my patrons can come up with. So on to the hands. Another reason why I'm enjoying painting monkeys and macaques so much. Such nimble little fingers. And it's such a big part of the pose with this animal. You can see that something actually obscured this area slightly in my photo reference just towards the bottom. But I could see enough to make this happen and to bring the hands and the little area of foreground that the macaque is sitting on to bring those better into focus. So the final bit of foreground with just enough shadow there to really help ground the macaque and give us that sense of light and shade. I hope that you enjoyed seeing this come together here. Full series coming very soon on Patreon. And I'm really looking forward already to my next wildlife piece. I've got to make some decisions on which reference to tackle next. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. But thanks very much for watching this here. Please do remember to hit subscribe. And until next time, happy pastling.